Toyota made some huge changes to the 2024 Tacoma. It is all new and this is the most luxurious Tacoma you've seen to date. I'm talking about luxury because this is the limited trim, which is kind of their more traditional trim, but it's luxurious, unlike the TRD models. And today we're gonna to take a look at the exterior, the interior, and get it out on the road for a test drive. And I'll talk about these different trims. Let's get started. All right, y'all, let's take a look at the exterior details here. But first of all, let me go through all of the trims and it is a mouthful, starting with the base SR, SR5, TRD Pre-Runner, TRD Sport, TRD Off-Road, Limited, which we have here, Trail Hunter, and the top end TRD Pro. Now, this one, I'm gonna focus on the non-TRD models because this is the limited trim, more luxurious, more street-oriented. Maybe we'll get the TRD models pretty soon and we can talk about that. But this is a brand new redesign. It's got a brand new platform, a body on frame platform here. It still looks familiar in some ways, but it's totally different in others. So you're gonna get LED headlight standard with an LED daytime running light. The sequential turn signal is going to be on this limited model. And this looks pretty darn sharp. The grill's also going to vary and we get LED fog lights down here on the SR5 model and up. So what do y'all think of the overall looks of this Tacoma compared to what it used to look like? The paint on this one is an optional premium paint called Super Sonic Red. It's kind of what we've seen on like the RAV4 Prime. It's been popular with Toyota for a little bit here. You get the iForce Max badge right up here telling everybody that you've got the most high-end powertrain. Wheels are going to vary a little bit from 17-inch steel wheels on the base to 18-inch shiny ones right here on the Limited. You've got a shiny Limited badge on the side there, the chrome mirror caps, chrome door handles. This is definitely more of a lux luxury street-oriented design with this pickup. Now, dimensionally, I'm honestly very surprised that this is pretty much the same dimensions of the outgoing model. It's 213 inches with this double cab five-foot bed here. Speaking of which, there's an extra cab, which is pretty awesome. It's not a passenger back seat, it's just a storage in the back seat or the double cab version, which you see here. Five foot or six foot bed is available depending on your trim and your overall setup. We've got LED tail lights back here as well. And look at this massive Toyota chrome exhaust polished tip back there, Tacoma stamped on the rear tailgate. There's a surprise with this rear tailgate, which I'll show you in a minute more iForce Max branding right there, our receiver back here. So you're good to go on that front. But one of the biggest changes here is that Toyota now gives us coil spring rear for the suspension, but this one actually gives us an adaptive suspension, which we'll talk about in the test drive. It's an adaptive variable suspension. The base SR can give us leaf springs, but the rest can give us these coil springs. Now coming to the bed, you're gonna get, depending on configuration, you can get a five foot bed or a six foot bed still, so it's nice that Toyota still includes that. This particular trim does not allow us to get the six foot bed though. But we've got the double cab, five foot bed. One thing new with Toyota is there is now more depth in here, so you've got a deeper bed, and you can tell by looking at it, we'll look in a second. And one thing I did not expect is a power tailgate on a Tacoma. Didn't expect that at all. Toyota says the non-limited, so this is for the limited model, the like SR and SR5 still have a lightweight tailgate. And you don't even have to lift it. You just nudge it and it's gonna close itself too. Payload numbers vary quite a bit depending on the trim, 1,500, 1,600 pounds. So you'll have to check it out for your specific trim. Of course, this is a locking tailgate. I just had the Ford Ranger which actually had built-in steps here, which was kind of nice. You see that in some full sizes too. Toyota doesn't have anything like that. Uh, the Ranger also had measuring on the tailgate. You had the clamps available back here. This doesn't have that, but you've got the deck rail system. So you've got four adjustable uh, movable tie-down cleats, two on each side, just like that. That can definitely come in handy. But we also have the fixed tie-downs in each corner as well. You can see them up there. This bed looks very familiar and very similar to what it did, but it is taller. It's a deeper bed, which definitely comes in handy. And you have two LED lights on the side, plus the LED lights up there. And check it out, 120 volt plug-in back here. Always nice to see. Not to mention, you also have extra storage right in there. There's also more over here. Check this out. So this is more of an electrical box right here. You got a 12 volt power outlet 
We've got a USB charging port section over there. So this is nice to be able to plug in back here if you need to. Disappointingly, obviously, as expected, between the wheel wells, you're just under 45 inches, not actually four feet. Unlike the Ford Ranger, which is four feet wide there, but you can see the cutouts back here where you can put boards across and have like a two-tiered system and be able to fit four-foot sheets back here. Now, Toyota gives us the smart key standard with push button start. Even the SR model is gonna give you the smart key, but it's just gonna be on the driver door. Now, one thing I did not expect with Toyota at all with the Tacoma is, check this out, power retractable side steps. I didn't see that coming at all. The good news is you can turn those off, you can have them be automatic, or you can just permanently leave them out as well. That is a standard feature on this limited trim which is why I said this is a luxurious Toyota. Another thing here is with the limited trim standard, you have the digital key, so you can use your key or your phone as a key. And three, press, lock, and hold. This Tacoma, you're gonna see the mirrors flash. This is the remote start. So you do have remote start on the Tacoma. And unlike older Toyotas, as soon as you open the door, it doesn't just shut off. Now for the front seats, a quick stat line here just off of quick looks at specs and measurements. First of all, how roomy does it look? But total leg room is the exact same as 24 and 23 models, front and back seats combined. So is the headroom and the shoulder room. Can you believe that? I thought that this was gonna be more roomy, but I mean, let me get in here and show you what I look like. Real quick, a look at these front seats is, they will start out as cloth manual seats with lumbar adjustment on the SR and SR5. You can option up for heated seats on the SR5, but this limited model gives us, gives us the soft tech. So these aren't leather, it's synthetic, but it does feel nice, it looks nice. You've got pretty big bolstering here and on the bottom, and just look how soft this is. Hopefully that doesn't break down over time, but these are heated and ventilated with lumbar support and power adjustable height, tilt, recline, and four-way lumbar support. The steering wheel is manual tilt and telescoping right here. It does give you a good range of motion though. I believe the Nissan does not telescope. Ford, I can't remember if that one does either. Maybe it's GM that doesn't actually telescope too. So it's nice to see Toyota gives us a lot of adjustability there, including the four-way lumbar. Now I've driven this Tacoma couple hundred miles and I've been very comfortable. I know there were some complaints in the previous Tacoma about comfort, but I've been comfortable in here. It's been a while since I've been in the old Tacoma, but I really can't complain. I've got the seat kind of low. I'm five foot nine and I don't actually have a ton of headroom. Having a vehicle with a moonroof does cut into your headroom, but I fit in here okay. You'll have to check it out. Check it out for yourself. But I've been comfortable in these seats despite the fact that I'm surprised we don't actually have more space statistically than before. Now let's take a quick look at the back seat. So a couple cool things. First of all, this is the hybrid model. So the nickel metal hydride battery is underneath of this seat. So we don't have the under seat storage. That's what this venting is right here. So don't cover that up. So you can't lift that up and store stuff, but you will have storage under the seats otherwise. And since this is split fold here, I would suspect the split fold to be the same for the storage area with the seats. But you can fold this forward. We have the little JBL sub back here. And then basically your jack kit system back there. Not much space. Otherwise, maybe you could stash a couple things on those hooks there. Another nice perk, Toyota gives you a grab handle on both sides. And here's the thing. This is the double cab, but there is the extra cab, which makes this back seat area smaller but exclusively storage and more practical for storing items like that over on the door good grab handle soft armrest still right here and then of course plastic up top but look at these bottle holders down here you're good to go with that setup too now this is where i sit behind myself i'm five foot nine this is where i'm comfortable i have the seat kind of low don't have a lot of foot space i have adequate knee space honestly a little underwhelmed with the back seat and overall space in the Tacoma considering it's a next generation but you've got good cup holders right here I really like seeing that plus big news here is not only that you have two USB ports but with our hybrid we have a 2400 watt 120 volt plug right there tons of power capability with that plug there's no air conditioning vents in the back but you can definitely use those up front and feel them coming from there. There's no 
cup holders in the middle. What's going on here? No armrest even. We have cup holders there obviously, but another difference on the base model and different Tacomas, not this one, is that this can fold forward, a fold flat front seat with a lockable storage compartment and you could use it as like a laptop tray, a storage area, just more practicality in addition to just a passenger vehicle. Now again, I'm five foot nine, this part is very close to my head, but with my hat, I still have uh, maybe an inch right up there. So headroom is okay, but I'm still a little disappointed in the overall space back here. But this is kind of a stadium seating setup to where you're higher than the driver. You've got good looks out the sides, but these seats are very upright in the back. Push button start is right there on every single trim. One quirky little thing is this little storage area right here. I don't know what you would technically use that for, but you just got a little spot right there. The steering wheel is heated as well. It's leather wrapped here. If you get the heating, the SR5 will have even a plastic polyurethane steering wheel and not be leather wrapped, but you can option up to get this leather wrapped steering wheel. And I love the controls, the layout right here. It's hefty. You still have the four spoke design. It feels nice and it's thick. I love this steering wheel a lot. Over on the door, the door is really peculiar. So you've got this massive soft armrest right here. If you like your arm out the window, Toyota has you covered. You've got padding here, padding here, a nice grab handle. And this is even like rubberized right there as well. And check out this storage area. I don't know exactly what this is for, but this is perforated. You could stash some stuff here, like hook something up there. You've got a couple of bottle holders down there as well. And my big mug, can actually fit in there like that. Over here, there's a ton of stuff. So this is your interior brightness control. This is your manual adjustment for your headlights. So you can adjust the level of your headlight, particularly useful if you're towing, your rear end squats, your front end goes up, you can lower your headlights so that they're not shining in people's faces. Automatic high beam button conveniently located there. Traction control, you can turn on your 120 volt plug, even lower your power tailgate there. Now down here, this is for the cargo light, easy button right there. And this is how you can turn off your running boards. You can have them automatically go out like that or keep them in. And I've honestly kept them in because they just kind of get in my way. Now the rest of this interior is totally different. I mean, it still feels practical, but look at the tech in here. You've got a big screen, you've got a digital mirror, you've got a huge cluster right there but it still has some utilitarian aspects of it, of simplicity, which I love from Toyota. So first of all, on this limited model, we get this massive 12 and a quarter inch display. So you've got different information that you can toggle through. So you can have some preset screens, like three different settings for your screens. You can hold the button down on your steering wheel, and change the information that you see in each section. So you can go over to the right, you can change all kinds of different information over there, which can be helpful. You can customize this how you like. You can change the way it looks a little bit too. And you do that with the steering wheel pad over here. You've got volume, voice, seeking buttons. This is your main control section for that. Voice up there, your calling button up there too. Traction, or not traction control, cruise control settings here, lane keeping system, it's all pretty simple and easy to use and really can't complain about it. Now overhead, we even get a head up display there as well. Head up display is part of this limited model and it shows you all kinds of information and you can customize that too. Now over here, this massive screen, I mean, look how big this thing is. It's huge. It's like a giant block tablet right in front of us. An eight inch screen is standard on the SR and SR5, which is still gonna give you uh, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can option up on the SR5 to get it with JBL. And this one is a 14 inch screen with JBL, standard on this Limited. We also get the 360 camera view here as well on the Limited model. So you can just push the camera button, which I'll show you in a second, or have a 360 view. And look at this, Toyota definitely upgraded their cameras. You can see really well around you. You can see over there. We've got a camera in the bed of the truck. I mean, this is like full size pickup status with this camera. It's really nice as well. You can line up with a trailer down here. There's more trailering functions on here, which I'll show you in a bit. Back out, 
you can expand the wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, just like that. Or you can keep the Toyota menu over here. It looks nice, it works nice. You've got vehicle settings that you can customize throughout the system as well. We've got built-in Wi-Fi, the JBL Audio, and check out one thing with the JBL Audio. The JBL speaker up here is portable. It's the JBL Flex little Bluetooth speaker that you can take with you and it's gonna charge sitting in there in the pickup. Tucked away over here is an integrated trailer brake controller. I love that Toyota also included that on here. That's optional even on the SR5 and standard on this limited model. Our heated steering wheel button is right there. Heated and ventilated seats have their own button as well. And these huge knobs are really nice. They have little rubber liners on them and some unique texture to them. Same thing with the volume knob. Toyota, I love the big knobs from Toyota, honestly. This screen is gonna be blank unless you change it with your climate. I love how you know you have physical controls for everything, but you have a screen where you're gonna see stuff too. You have automatic dual zone climate control standard on this limited trim. Otherwise, you'll get the regular climate control in addition on the other trims. Check it out. With the hybrid, you're gonna get high powered charging right here. You've got two USB-C, 12 volt power outlet right there. We have a wireless charging mat here, which is kind of unique. You just sit your phone in there and then it basically sticks to that like that. There's also space for a little storage down here. It's kind of a lost pit. I think it's gonna be easy to lose stuff and get dirty down there, but you can stash like sunglasses or a wallet or something unique like that. Your shifter, pretty big, takes up a lot of space and kind of covers up this area. It's a conventional shifter, which I'm glad to see instead of a push button type of system. Electronic parking brake, brake hold button, and then check this out. So we have a full-time four-wheel drive. To change here, you press this in, and then to go to four low, you go there. Four high right there. You can lock all four with this, and it will show you a locked icon on your uh, instrument cluster. Tow haul mode, you can spin this dial for the drive mode, we'll go through that. So you got Sport S, Sport S Plus, Custom, Normal, even a Comfort Mode because we have an Adaptive Suspension and Eco Mode, and we'll talk about those in the test drive. Toyota also gives you quick access to your camera, and this button right here, you press that. This is a trailer backup guide. You can have saved trailers on here that you can customize on your display. Just more full-size pickup tech that we're getting in the Tacoma. These cup holders work well too. They fit large mugs, smaller things as well. And one cool thing is that this side is lower, this side is higher, so you've got different variables for different drink sizes. This center console, or the center armrest is nice and soft. It does not slide, but it is in a good spot to be comfortable here. Lift it up right there, and it's just a basic, smaller interior. Over here, Toyota gives us a little shelf, kind of like their SUVs have given us lately. We got a locking glove box right here. It's actually decent size in there. And this whole door and texture right here, we got this wood trim, we've got this soft material right there. It's just all surprising in the Tacoma. And check this out. We've got this rubber handle right here. It's kind of like if you're gonna go off-roading, you can hang on to that. You've got a hook built in right there. We even have a little Toyota uh, first aid kit down there, but this is all really cool. Overhead on the limited trim, Toyota actually gives us the digital rear view mirror too. So this is using a camera in the back where you've got garage controls on here, you've got crystal clear visibility on there as well. You can change the brightness, the level, all of that. Up above, we've got a sunglass holder. You can turn your interior lights on with that button and open this in the back we also get a sliding power door back there just another nice little feature that's standard on the limited trim optional on the sr5 and then we also have a sunroof which is on this limited trim now one thing to note is that this is a pre-production vehicle you can see that up there so the tacoma is new some things might not be exactly how they will be when it is sold, so keep that in mind. Sliding visor, glad to see it from Toyota.
Now, when I was waiting for the Tacoma to come out and be redesigned, the powertrain was what I was the most excited to hear about and the most anxious to hear about. And quite frankly, I'm not surprised that this is the way they went. There's no more V6. There's no naturally aspirated option. It is all turbo or turbo hybrid. So there are two options right here. Most of them are gonna come with the regular 2.4 liter turbo four cylinder, but you can upgrade and get this max version, the iForce Max, which is a hybrid model. So that base engine with the twin scroll turbo is gonna give you 278 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque and an eight speed auto. Technically the base model actually gets lower horsepower and torque numbers, but the rest of them are gonna get those numbers that I just mentioned. It can be two wheel drive, standard or four wheel drive, like your traditional four wheel drive, and it can get up to 26 miles per gallon on the highway. In fact, some TRD models can even give you a six speed manual transmission, but that is not available on this particular model. Now right here, this limited iForce Max gets that 2.4 liter turbo four cylinder, with the hybrid setup, which gives us a huge bump, 326 horsepower, 465 pound-feet of torque, and it comes with full-time four-wheel drive. Miles per gallon, being a hybrid, is 23 city, 24 highway, and a 24 MPG combined rating. Max towing is gonna be around 6,000 pounds as equipped, depending on what you get. If you get the non-max version here, you'll get about 6,300 pounds with the limited trim. It just depends on your configuration, and there's a ton of different configurations. Which powertrain would you go for? The one with all kinds of torque, like this Max model or the regular iForce? All right, y'all, we are now behind the wheel of this Tacoma. This has been a long awaited video here. I've been super excited to see this new Tacoma and I'm pleasantly surprised with everything that they've done. I definitely still appreciate a more traditional pickup. I'm gonna miss the V6, uh, kind of the simplicity of the interior, but this is all very nice and Toyota definitely capitalized on things that they could have. I'm really also excited that they added a coil suspension in the back instead of just leaf springs for comfort, but still has, you know, still gonna have some good capability to it. Uh, this model has an adaptive suspension, which I did not expect from Toyota at all. They definitely offer it in other vehicles and Lexus, but uh, this one has the adaptive suspension. So we'll talk about how it drives, how it feels, first impression is that the windshield just like the tundra is shrunk quite a bit it's a pretty narrow section i don't really have complaints as far as visibility it just may take a little bit of getting used to now coming to a stop just overall impressions on the interior it's really easy to live with i've spent a lot of time behind the wheel of this tacoma this time around and i have enjoyed all of it i've been comfortable it's really really nice in here everything i mean this is the limited trim everything is nice you've got all kinds of features that i didn't expect in here too it's comfortable and it drives nice it's it definitely has improved ride comfort and driving dynamics and overall planted feel compared to the previous generation we're going to keep it just in normal mode to start with And this powertrain really feels pretty effortless. I've driven the 2.4 liter in other vehicles, but not in this Tacoma, just the turbo model. This hybrid max is really gonna put a lot of torque out, even with just small throttle, small input. It's got a ton of torque, especially for a pickup of this size. You can just feel it. The throttle is ready to go all the time. That's one thing about the uh, V6 of the last model is a lot of people complained about the shiftiness and the jerkiness of the transmission and the delay in power, the lack of torque. But this, this is completely different and you get quite a bit more torque even still with that 2.4 liter turbo without the hybrid model, but pedal down. Now I will say, when I was on a highway and I went to go around and pass somebody, you definitely get a boost really quick of power. But to get up to speed and feel comfortable passing, it actually didn't feel as quick as I thought it would. The horsepower numbers are not great, they're good, but the torque is the biggest thing. If you're towing, driving around town, quick spurts of power, this is good to go with that. 
Now this actually gives us laminated side glass as well. So you've got a quieter interior, you've got less wind noise, really not much at all. It's a very upscale experience for the Tacoma. Let me put us in, so you've got Sport and Sport Plus. So you get more powertrain in Sport S. Sport Plus is gonna dial in that adaptive suspension, firm things up. And it's just quick to downshift. The transmission has been very smooth. And here's the deal with this being a hybrid. I'm gonna put us in comfort mode now actually is at times your gas engine's gonna shut off. And especially when you're taking off from a stop, you're gonna be able to feel it kick in a lot more, the gas engine kick in and turn on a lot more than other Toyota models. It's not nearly as seamless, probably because of how powerful this powertrain actually is. You don't get a ton of efficiency with this model, not as much as some people maybe hoped like a 30 mile per gallon range, but it's still better. You've got a lot of power available to you and you've got some plugins and ports in the truck that can be really helpful as well. And the comfort mode actually does, you know, I'm, ass I'm assuming it really uses the adaptive suspension to soften things up. And it felt comfortable. I would turn it in the comfort mode, driving out of town on the highway and interstate, and it felt soft, gliding over everything. And the Tacoma's been a joy to drive. It still has a, a taller upright feel. You got this shrunken window. You feel like you've got a good size pickup, but it's comfortable in here too. The ride is comfortable. All these pickups nowadays are getting more and more comfortable, more and more creature comforts and more and more expensive. But I think a Toyota did a really nice job with the driving dynamics. The weight of the steering still feels lightweight without being sloppy too. No transmission jerkiness, the powertrain's been good and responsive. Now to wrap things up on this new Tacoma, I definitely like a lot of what Toyota did here. I like the old Tacoma. I've liked all of the Tacomas going way back. And I think Toyota made plenty of changes to modernize it and to make some people happy, but still keep it feeling and looking like a Tacoma in some ways as well, to where there's a lot of technology, it's more efficient, it's still got the off-road capability and chops that you get with those TRD models and some extra models like the Trail Hunter as well. I like that we get an extra cab available, we get a long box available, and it's still familiar Toyota. Let me know what your thoughts are down below of this Tacoma. Are you happy with the upgrade, the long-awaited redesign here? Let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching.